They think that they want it, but they don't really want it. I strike with no warning, no, they don't see it coming. I handle my business, stay the fuck out the way. Yeah, all on my lane, get the fuck out my space. I'm on a winning streak, I'm on a winning streak, I'm on a winning streak, yeah, I'm on a winning streak, 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 yeah, I'm on a winning streak. And he fucking did it. And I said, Boosie was gonna fall the fuck off when he got out. Hey, you tripping, nigga. Boosie, I was gonna be boosting What the fuck you saying? It's an era. Everyone has their time. Once that time is passed, that's why while you're hot, you should do everything that you, but also getting prepared for that rainy day. The rap trap is if motherfuckers notice that you're doing this and not this. Oh, that nigga ain't really nah, that nigga. Nah. And me, with my conspiracy theories, I think that it will be an outside influence that makes them turn on you. Kind of like, you know, as long as you're who I said this to? I said this to um Big Home. I can't say his name because that, that story was heavy what he said. But he said that he um he was fucking with the three S's for five months. One night. Um fuck it, man. I did it, man. I'm gonna eh, jump back out here. He jumped back out there with the third S, fucked the bitch, and did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Welcome back to The Rap Trap. I'm Ayo Canseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Man 2 Movement. And this is, in hindsight, um, Kodak Black just got his judgment uh, pared down three years. Uh, fair time for fucking around with that gun and shit like that. Um, and I don't know what the fuck to say. Uh, this is the end. This is the end that every real nigga, real street nigga that's lucky uh, is going to meet. Uh, the unlucky ones die young before they get the um, clairvoyant vision um, to see what the fuck they were doing and what type of danger they were putting themselves in, what type of pain they were putting their family through, yada, yada, yada. Um, this is the same reality that will befall NBA young boy, Quando Rondo, and every other little nigga, uh, youngin' A's, Jada Youngin, um, NLE Chopper. You will be baited into some shit um, by the street, and it's going to take you right the fuck out of here. Um, so we'll have a death, we'll have an uh, incarceration. And this is how you're going to walk down your career. Um, all, all that you're going to have at the end of the day is memories. Yeah, you know, she, I used to, man, that shit wasn't that, bro. I used to, goddamn, bro. I had all the bad hoes, bro. Shit, you know, I used to, you already know what I was on, bro. You know what it was. And you're going to come to the realization that. Those people, that big mass of entourage that you had was merely just a gang of fucking parasites. Um, you think about the money that, you know, you spent and, and how many people got blessed just by being around you. Just by being around you, you might just feel, you know, you on the pill, you high, you know what I'm saying? They might throw a motherfucker five racks just for being in the house. Like, fuck it, nigga, come up. No nigga ain't gonna do shit with the money. Um, 
but that's just what it is. Like you, you feeling good and shit like that. And um, the the worst part about it is, as you're languishing away, not this jail sentence because sentence because um, you still Kodak Black three years. Let me be honest with you because they saying that this shit right here, this this three years right here, this just the fair time. This ain't even talking about the state shit or um the the new charge he got for uh uh kicking the CO in the nuts or some shit like that. So he got that charge and the feds and the state, these niggas ain't gonna cut you no favors on some shit like this was the plan the whole time. Like, this is a plan for every artist. Cut them loose, cut them loose, cut them loose. As long as he pays our lawyer, which he thinks is his lawyer, as long as he pays our lawyer, um, it's all a fucking game. As long as he pays our lawyer, get him on out, put him on strict to probation, strict to probation. He's not going to stop doing the shit. He's not going to stop doing it. He gonna keep on trying to find ways to smoke. He gonna keep trying to find ways to, you know what I'm saying? We gonna have this nigga wrapped up forever. Then you get the Meek Mill fucking probation for fucking 10 years and shit like that. You know what I mean? And then the way that they see it, the way that they're projecting it to the public is, look how many chances we giving Kodak Black. It's like it, it was set up for you to fail from the beginning because we got good news and we got bad news. Hold on, hold on. But all my, all my habitual donators that always hear that name during the um, AO Nation donation conversation that we do every third Sunday, I salute you before we do anything. Um, to take your hard earned and to put it in something that you fuck with, it motivates me beyond words, period. Love. The good news is this. I'm going to continue to do the How to Identify Nothing As Bit series. Of course, you know it's um, an AO Nation exclusive series. So you have to go to patreon.com and become a patron um, in order to watch it. And once you become a patron, you'll be able to see all of the other unreleased episodes that I couldn't put on YouTube. Every Monday we go live on the Big Face Podcast channel at 7.30. A lot of y'all be late than a motherfucker, but we go live every Monday at 7.30. Um, if you're a lieutenant, you'll be given the privilege to call in and state your opinion at any point in time during the broadcast. Um, at 6.45, you'll be given a call-in number on your Patreon account, and we just go from there. For all my well, new people, if you want the uh, Are You Serious t-shirt, it's $15. The Big Face Podcast t-shirt is $15. The Men 2 t-shirt is $20. And the Big Face Podcast Scullies are $10. Uh, go to paypal.me forward slash Are You Serious 10. Address, size, color, and what shirt you want. It's time for the bad news. The bad news is... No one watches sponsored videos. So if you're a rapper and you're thinking that I'm going to get an IG sponsorship or I'm going to get a Facebook sponsorship, nobody's watching the shit. So the numbers that they're telling you that you have are bullshit. And you know that bullshit because when you post after you did your sponsorship, your shit plummets. Even when you are running the sponsorship, your fucking YouTube numbers are bullshit. They're bullshit. Stop playing with yourself. Here on this show, where we do not accept trash music, we do not accept homosexual music, and we don't accept that mumble rap bullshit. The prices for promotion start at $200. They go up to $2,000, depending on how much exposure you want. They start there. So if you don't have $200, there's no reason to come this way. If your music is not up to par, there's no reason to come this way. I explain the packages as soon as you come in the inbox and say, Hey, I got my budget together with the packages. I'm not putting out no fucking price sheet so you can pass that shit to your fucking homosexual homeboy and send him my fucking way. Ain't no fucking price sheet because everybody can't get on this show. I want to see your motherfucking profile. I want to check, see what the fuck I'm fucking with. 
This show has integrity. That's why we rock the way we rock. But you keep paying that $25, $35 to a fucking sponsorship, which no one sees, they scroll right past it. And you'll be a fucking 50-year-old rapper. And that's just what it is. Just shit together, be home. The success they gave you, your mental wherewithal did not warrant it. There was no way you were going to be able to transfer this success into anything that would um, benefit anyone else but you. You were going to be the money. You were going to be the one that's shining. You're going to go to jail. You're going to die. And that money going to die right then with you. Because no one around you knows what to do with money. They isolate these motherfuckers. They make sure that you have a mama like NBA Youngboy mama. They make sure that you, 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 you're not educated. They can just tell by the way you talk. You know, it's a lot of artists, you will go and uh, sit down with the label and shit. Like, sit down with Sony, sit down with Warner Brothers, sit down with Universal. And, uh... You'll wonder, you know, what went wrong? Why didn't this deal come through the way it's supposed to have came through? You know, of course, they're going to throw out that 720 as soon as you walk in. Rock with us. And, of course, 720 is, you know what I'm saying, 360 times, you know what I mean? Which means, like, you just paying us off the rip pretty much. We just sign this piece of paper and, and you pretty much paying to be on this label. Um, if you look at a lot of deals, that's pretty much what the fuck it is. Um, but like I say, if I'm the only reason that you're a star, um, nigga, you ain't got no say so. This is why I tell artists, um, when I do the classes, when I do, um, the biggest package, um, You trying to get a deal and shit like that isn't going to do you any justice. You going to Sway in the morning, Funk Flex, uh, shout out to I-95. You know what I'm saying? You going to these places, uh, even to BET. You know, I, I, I've been on these shows where, you know, a lot of these shows, let me tell you, and I, I want to, I hope that I remember to post this clip in this video of fucking Quavo hosting a rap competition like he's the judge how in the fuck is quay and, and quavo tells the nigga yeah you, you know you, you talent you, your talent just might not be in rap it's like how hold the fuck up nigga even though to be honest to be honest them niggas have a, a flow and and they pretty much perfected their flow and shit like that it's mumble rap um but they know what they're saying. They're saying words and shit like... And, and really, dog, this shit's so fucked up out here right now. Dog, anybody who is actually writing their music, I have to salute them, to be honest. Because these niggas think going to boot for freestyling is a fucking... Yeah, bro. Just, you know, you, you just go in there, bitch, and just express yourself, bro. You go in there, bitch, and just, you know what I'm saying? Say what's up, you know what I'm saying? Tell them for how you feel, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got to write that shit down, bro. It's in my heart, bro. I'm a real street nigga, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I really do this shit, bro. You a fuck, bro. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, also, if you take an artist, um, take a lot of artists uh, that actually know how to rap, you take their written songs and then tell a motherfucker just throw a live ass beat on and just tell them to freestyle. The freestyle sound, the freestyle sounds better. Um, really, because songs now are more about energy, and energy has always been a big part of music. You know, Buster Rhyme, Ja Rule, DMX. It was, it's, you know, Nelly. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? It's about your energy on the song and shit like that. Look, so I can go ahead. Come on. Hee hee. Get in the room. Go.
But you wonder why you go in these meetings, you sit down with them, and you're not getting a response or the reaction um, that you deserve. And it's because you're going in there and you're speaking like this. You're not going in there, bitch, hopper, hopper, hopper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I didn't do what I do, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking Quando Ron. Like you don't sound like that. You know, eat like a, a smart a smart nigga can play dumb. A wise nigga can play dumb. A wise man can play dumb, but a dumb man can't play wise. Kodak Black said that too. Um, that's real shit. Um. Even when these niggas try to sound smart, you can still hear it in them like this nigga's fucking retarded. Um, I mean, not even so much as a fucking car wash, man. Barbershop, dog. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and they and they, they can't allow you to get in, dog. They can't allow you to get in. They cannot allow someone who actually has a mind, an entrepreneur, Spirit from the jump, like Nipsey Hussle, like he couldn't get his foot in the door for nothing. You know what I'm saying? That resistance that he was finding, like the fuck, he didn't have fucking everything that an artist needs. It was authentic, all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? And this is why that's the main reason why I would say it was plausible in the beginning that. Um, his murder was um, a conspiracy. But then after you look at, you know what I'm saying? No matter who the fuck you are, it is what it is. The street is going to devour everything. Um, but no, we're not going to allow you to liberate these fucking people. We have a good fucking system working right now and we want it to continue. So, bye, nigga. And they'll blackball not only you, but anybody that you try to bring in. Because we see what you're trying to do. We're not going to let you get no fucking money. So you can fucking do what the fuck, you know, needs to be done. We're not doing it. Um, And it's like, as, as, as fierce and as fucking deliberate as a business model as it is, wicked, evil, a business model as it is, is still a fucking successful business model even when you have people like me exposing the fact that this is what's going on the only people that can hear me are the people who already have a twist of intellect a rationale logic in them and that's not the people that they're looking for they're looking for the people who don't have it it's like a dog whistle you know what i'm saying so um and they can find this shit out by asking a series of questions. You know, like, who are you voting for? Um, what artists did you come up off listening to? How old were you when you decided you wanted to be an artist? Um, who do you like more, your mom or your dad? You know what I'm saying? Just making sure that... He, that uh, yeah, this is definitely the guy. This is definitely him. Um, how... Uh, what was your favorite class in school? And they know the answers they supposed to get back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never had a dad. Fuck school. You know what I'm saying? Um, And you know what's so fucked up, even more fucked up about that is they know that there's an audience that will relate with that to the heart. I'm talking about to the fucking core of their essence. And why the fuck is that? Then we have to go into the household and find out, you know what I'm saying, why this is. And then, of course, we know on the Big Facts podcast exactly why that is. But moreover, let's let's get into this uh, Kodak Black case. Um, I don't like, I, I'm, I'm going be honest with you, I don't like using the whole, you know, young and dumb shit. I really don't like using that as an excuse because to me it feels like a cop-out. And that would mean that we'll never have a generation of kids that will see this for what it is, see the system for what it is, and fight against it unanimously, unanimously um, all together, 
we're going to fight against this and push these fucking... But how can you push these labels out, man? As, as long as they fucking dangling money, these motherfuckers got fail, uh, uh, exit strategies, fail-proof plans, and if this don't work, we do this, and if this don't work, we do this. Um, so I'm sure they're already prepared for what's, what they're going to do when um, the kids wake up and find out that we're just pretty much using them for cattle. We're using rappers like a farmer would use a cow, a pig, a chicken. Um, raise them up, get them big and plump, make money off of them, the cow dies, get another one. And we've made an environment that's conducive to getting the fattest cows, even to the point where we'll fucking, you know, church's chicken, they, the, the farm they chickens come from, they shooting the motherfucking chickens up with fucking steroids and fucking creatine and all kind of shit. Motherfuckers got four, like, four fucking legs. Six wings, four legs, two heads. You wouldn't fucking know. You just trying to get something to eat before you go to work. Give a fuck about that shit. Me and Alton was talking about that shit today. About that chicken sandwich and shit. But it's just like cattle. Um, as soon as young boy is gone, speaking of this chicken sandwich, I want to focus on the making a star process because that's everything. The way this chicken sandwich was promoted, I'm talking about nation fucking wide. Everybody knew about it. The shit, like the sandwich is good, but it's just not that fucking, you know what I'm saying, crazy live. Um, the way it was promoted, the way it seemed like this was grassroots, this was fucking word of mouth. This was fucking the most natural and organic of promotion that you can get, fucking word of mouth. You're talking about it, I'm talking about it. Not fucking we're getting all kind of fucking spam in my in our emails or our inboxes or you keep seeing a sponsored message for fucking Popeyes. Hey, like, we're talking about it. We're making memes about it. You know what I'm saying? And I truly believe that once you are at the top or at least friends, you golf with the fucking people or the man who runs Google, everything is ran by fucking Google. Once you run Google or you're friends with a dude from Google, you, you Instagram and Facebook is nothing. It's nothing. Like, you've noticed this. You've noticed this in your everyday life that... You watch something and all of a sudden it pop up on all of your shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we already know that this happens. We know that algorithms are real. So, wouldn't it be um, the smartest thing for a record label to do to, like, rub shoulders with these people? You have enough money. You know what I'm saying? Like you're you're a business owner, you're in their league, and you have to fuck like this. Deep, like this is how your artists are getting promoted. You have to fuck with these people. So this is why you see a big fucking drop. And I've said this before. This is why you see a tremendous drop when an artist goes from the label to independent. We saw with Rick Ross. We saw with Big Crit. Go look at those fucking plummets. That shit is insane. Yeah, you know, I'm getting all this shit off the most. Everything come back to me. But God damn. Five million to 30,000? Video look exactly the same. I'm talking about probably even better. Music, same, even better. What changed? The machine. Or the... If we, if we truly believe that these labels are the machines, then we have to know there are parts in the motherfucker. One of those parts is the promotion part. And the promotion part, it cannot work without social media. And if you're into social media, that shit is plugged right the fuck into the consumer. 
So we don't have a choice in what we fuck with. And this is what I was talking about with um Cardi B wins the fucking uh, VMAs. Cardi B won the MT won the MTV award. Cardi Cardi B won. Like, I'm telling you, man, I'm trying to tell you something, dog. Uh, BET and MTV are co fucking competing. Bullshit. Bullshit. They're the same person. It's the same fucking person. And, oh, man, yeah, she blowing up. And then once it looks like an artist, Mr. you can just apply this to Takashi 6 9 Once... An artist, oh, she's a fucking, she won that. Now her value goes up for no reason at all. She didn't have to sell shit. I'm talking about out of fucking nowhere. No one has a Cardi B CD, nothing. But you see a video online, got 50,000 views, all fake. All fake likes, all fake comments. Everything is invisible. Everything is imaginary. But out of shit... They just made value. If all these people are connected, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, BT, VMA, MTV, how couldn't they make stars? How couldn't they? Her Instagram, 20 million uh, followers. YouTube, uh, 2 million subscribers. They're just putting, just making numbers. All they need is a fucking warm body. And we'll make you a fucking star. And we'll create value out of nothing. Out of nothing. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, who do y'all want to see? Uh, and you know all the fucking, at all these award shows, they tell them, applaud. Ah! Boo, boo. Sigh. Oh. Out of nothing. And we just, oh, Cardi B, oh, she, yeah, I'm just not shit because she's successful. But here, all the while, the real Cardi B, the, the, the person who truly embodies what Cardi B is and is 10 times more talented, you won't pay them no attention because they don't got but 100 followers and 20 views. How are we not being fucking played? Oh, Interscope has a has a has a new artist, and um, uh, uh, she's gonna be bigger than Cardi B. Uh, fucking uh, Sony has this new artist, and they're competing and they're going to war. Oh man, no, they ain't gonna be with you. Huh? Huh? It's uh, dog, and I've said this. It's it's the reality TV model format. <laughs> shit has become, you know, back in the days, road rules in the real world. Uh, that's a very good example. They, they they were groups on the same channel, and but it seemed like that was real because they actually had to do shit. Now we know that reality TV is scripted. It's just another form of soap operas, another fucking form. But when I look at some of this shit and how you can pretty much, you know, in a movie, it's going to be the beginning, a, a problem, and then fixing a the problem. That's a, that's a show. That's a movie. So, you know, if we're watching a kid's movie, um, it's going to be a beginning. You meet the characters, the middle, where you find out the problem and the resolution of the problem. It's getting to be like that with shit that it should not be like that. You can look at artists and it's no reason for me to even tell, do a fucking episode anymore. Go that black, go to jail. Uh, how couldn't he? Obviously he did. He's a, he's a rapper. This is why I made this fucking channel. It seemed like this is what was supposed to happen. Rappers are supposed to die. They're supposed to go to jail. To the point where, nigga, 
if you're not getting shot, dying, or going to jail, your name don't even get mentioned. Your name don't even get mentioned. We know as grown-ups that everything, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know, the connections. You want to believe that the people make the stars. But I believe they... I believe we forfeited that when we gave our life to social media. I was going to do a story the other night when I did that live, or uh, Monday, obviously. It was a story about the maid who took the nut out of a condom of a millionaire at a hotel of the maid. And she got pregnant and went to child support court and she won. And of course, I saw the shit and it's like, that's fake. Obviously it's fake. Shit popped up everywhere. Every fucking everybody, everybody posting the store, posting the store, posting the store. Now it's real. Get on the show. One person said, that's fake. It's from fucking Swedish joke column. I immediately knew it was fucking fake. Why didn't I know that? Why didn't I trust my senses no matter how many times I saw it? Numbers matter. Like, once you've been indoctrinated with this system of how the internet works, you no longer even trust because the internet is another fucking frontier. Space was supposed to be the final frontier. It's not. The digital virtual world is a whole nother fucking world. In itself, it's a whole nother fucking world. And in order, and in order to be successful in entertainment, you have to enter the fucking Space. You have to go to that final frontier. You have to. If you don't, then you'll just be like another any other artist who feel like I'm just gonna play my music. I ain't fucking this internet shit. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You have to interact with it. And the people who made this fucking frontier, they weren't just fucking internet geeks. These were people who listened to people that were psychologists. People that know how a person feels when they see that someone likes their pictures. How someone feels when they see that someone writes them a comment. Writes them a message. They understood that. So the same way that algorithms work with a computer, with the internet, it works in our mind. And they figured it out. They figured out who the fuck we were by how we interacted online through our virtual selves. Through our virtual selves. Feel like I'm going too deep. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, Kodak Black did got three years. Um... Three years is pretty much career suicide, career death. The only way, here's the fuck, here's the, here's the shit. The only way you can revive your career, he gonna get the same thing Boosie got when he got out. Oh, he, he back out. But he's not gonna be the same Kodak because Boosie, Boosie was a era. Not error, like wrong, a error, like new error. It was an error. What? Yeah, do the ratchet. You know, 
Two red bone kissing in the back seat. Two red bone kiss. Two, 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 two red bone kissing in the back seat. Keep going and relax. Yeah. Like that shit. It was a. It was a time when that shit was just. It was a time when Gucci Mane. It's a Gucci Mane era. Era. Cushion orange juice era. Once the era is over, you cannot restart it. It's over. It was us. That was us. That's what we were doing. We were doing it. As soon as your mind frame and the people who are listening to that music, when their mind frame develops a little bit more, they go through a little bit more, they're looking for another... Something that fits how they feel at that period in time. And he's still trying to go in that hole and it doesn't work. Doesn't work. I can go listen to that old Kodak, but that new shit, I can't fuck with it. I can't fuck with it. And he's going to start hearing, I want that old Kodak. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Um, and the only way, and then watch this. Then when he starts going to jail, because that's the only way to try to get you, like I said, if you're not dying, getting shot, fight, your name, nobody's talking about you. He starts doing that shit then and going to jail. Oh, that nigga, that nigga fell off. Niggas ain't saying the same thing. Quiet. Niggas ain't on that, you know, ah, oh, come that nigga real. No, nah, I was like, that nigga's stupid, man. Get your shit together, nigga. Come on, man, stop that shit, bro. They ain't on it no more. And that's, I I, told, I said this a while ago. Um, T.I. went to jail, jail for a year. Wayne went to jail for a year. You can do a year and it'll be all good. After that, there's no way that you can get back in. You know, you can't do it. You can't stick the hole no more. When I told niggas that Boosie was going to get out and do auto tune, they ain't doing no motherfucking auto tune. I was locked up when I said this shit. They ain't doing no motherfucking out there, Boosie, nigga. What the fuck you talking about, nigga? Shit. He got out and he fucking did it. And I said Boosie was going to fall the fuck off when he got out. Hey, you tripping, nigga. Boosie, I was going to be Boosie, nigga. What the fuck you saying? It's an error. Everyone has their time. Once that time is passed, that's why while you're hot, you should do everything that you, but also getting prepared for that rainy day. The rap trap is if motherfuckers notice that you're doing this and not this, Oh, that nigga ain't really, nah, that nigga, nah. And me, with my conspiracy theories, I think that it will be an outside influence that makes them turn on you. Kind of like, you know, as long as you're, who I said this to? I said this to um Big Home. I can't say his name because that, that story was heavy what he said. But he said that he, um, he was fucking with the three S's for five months. One night, um, fuck it, man, I did it, man. I'm, eh, I'm jump back out here. He jumped back out there with the third S, fucked the bitch, and caught chlamydia. I said, my nigga, you got all good because you could have easily got hit with the with the herpes bomb, the syphilis, a you know anything, whatever like that. So you won, but. This is what happens when the universe sees that uh, you're no longer working for the enemy, whoever you want the enemy to be, you're working over here. Now, you must be disciplined when you do wrong. When you were working for the enemy, there was no reason to discipline, discipline you because you were doing everything that the enemy told you to. It's the same thing when a motherfucker, you stop doing dope. And then you start doing it again and you fucking overdose. Get on the couch. Get on the couch. Get on the 
Hurry up! Got me fucked up. You have to choose what you're gonna do. With the rap trap, we're paying you, you getting this money. Make sure you're not trying to start no real estate business. Make sure you're not shooting no money down there to your 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 brother that's still in town so he can start his uh uh masonry uh business or uh lawn care service. Make sure you don't put no money back for a car wash so that you have an investment going while you're doing this shit. No, make sure that all the money that you get from this shit, you put it in our face and make sure that we know that you're spending this shit on some shit that ain't gonna make you no motherfucking money. Yeah, show that shit. Let me see it. Let me see what you spend it on. Buy you a big ass mansion. Yeah. Nah, you ain't finna play me. You ain't finna take my goddamn money and go over that bitch and try to do something fucking productive with it. Nah, show that shit, nigga. Yeah, dance. Dance, my little puppets. That type of shit. Um, Because when you look at it, it's like, this is what the fuck is happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it, 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 it's just heavy, man. It's just heavy. But this is the end for Kodak. Um, salute him. Definitely made a lot of good music and shit like that. Um, he just, he just never, he never stood a chance. Just like NBA young boy never stood a chance. He'll probably be. Let's do that. Who do y'all think is next? Who's the next one to drop um, to lose his career because of what looks like their own actions? Write that shit in the comment section. This is the Rap Trap. I'm El Conseco. Make sure you hit the PayPal and make sure you go to the Patreon. YouTube is where we're doing some real weird shit in December. So um, if you're not on Instagram, um, get to the Patreon so that I can be speaking to y'all just in case uh, something crazy happens. I'll see y'all in a minute. Love, love.